Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Thursday, January 21st, 2021. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. It's Thursday. That can mean only one thing. Steve Wolfong is here to join us. Steve, how goes it? Good morning, Daniel. Hanging in there, man. How are y'all? Doing great. After our interview with Steve, we've got a guest appearance from Trey Scott and Chris Hummer from the College Football Daily Podcast. They broke down the key returnees, the guys who did not head for the draft. Shocker, Chris Olave is at the top of the list, and they talk about just how impactful that can be for the Buckeyes. But the director of recruiting for 24-7 Sports is here, so we will stay in his wheelhouse. And there is news. We thought the class of 2021, at least I have said this, was down to JT Tuamolau. There was also talk of Rajon Davis, a linebacker out of California. I thought that was kind of a pipe dream. What do you know? Rajon Davis and his family are visiting this weekend. Greg Biggins, our West Coast correspondent with The Scoop, please bring us up to speed. Well, I think Al Washington has done a terrific job leading the charge for Ohio State in the recruitment of Rajon Davis. And, and there's, you know, genuine interest uh, in, in the Buckeyes. And, 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 and it starts with the success that they've had on the field and, and the type of defensive scheme they run and, and, and the success that they've had not only uh, in the win column on Saturday and, and player development. And I think Ohio State views Rajon Davis as a guy that can be multifaceted in their defense, a guy that can you know, be a, a pass rusher on the edge, a guy that can drop in coverage. And, and he kind of has a skill set similar to this year's Buckets Award winner in Jeremiah Owusu Karamoa from Notre Dame. You know, they're similar in stature and similar in play style with the way college football and, and just football in general is evolving. You need linebackers that um, can, can play in space but can also bring a pass rush presence, a guy that you, you can delay blitz and has – to get home and, and, and make a play. And, and Rajon Davis checks all those boxes. And I, I don't think it's a done deal to USC. You know, that's where the crystal ball stands for, for Rajon Davis right now. And USC, I think they've done all they can to land land the young man. You know, they, they, they went out and put together a class this cycle uh, that's pretty strong on defense and, and showed Rayshon Davis he can play with some, some quality guys on defense. And, and they showed improvement on the field. You know, they went to the Pac-12 title game, went 5-1, and, one and and hired some new coaches on the defensive side of the ball that really didn't get a chance to work themselves in because of the pandemic. There wasn't much of a spring ball or or, or, or summer camp, but, but those coaches were able to show some progress at USC this year. But, you know, on the flip side, Ohio State – they, they don't have to prove anything to, to Rajon. Uh, it, it's a program that speaks for itself, and he's going to come out and check out Columbus and get a vibe for the city and, and see what it feels like. Leaving home has never been an issue for him. He's been committed to he's committed to LSU for a long time. He he, he kept lines of communication open to, to up schools and uh, after his commitment, and, and, and that's when Ohio State's been able to, to make a move. Ohio State's had some success in California, and, and, and so I think that this is a chance for them to really make a move this, this weekend. And, and uh, um, so we'll, we'll see, we'll see what Greg Biggins has with, with the Rajon Davis camp coming out of it. But, uh, you know, coming in everything I've heard, I, I think, I, I think that Ohio state does have a chance to make a move here. Uh, um, despite the, the, all the crystal balls for USC. A lot of those crystal balls were probably rolled without the knowledge he's going to make this visit. So let's hope the red carpet is rolled out as they know how to do it. Another guy that I find kind of interesting, Michigan native Will Johnson, class of 2022, rumored to be a package deal with Domani Jackson, who is headed likely to USC if you look at the crystal balls. He, the California native. I think Alan Chu, one of our Midwest correspondents, surprised many when he said in a chat on the Michigan site that he thought Will Johnson was actually favoring Ohio State pending Michigan's defensive back hire. Please bring us up to speed. Yeah, I believe that to be true as well. Uh, Alan True and, and Sam Webb, uh, the publisher of our Michigan site, those guys, you know, have indicated Ohio State being in great position. And I talked to um, Will's dad this week, Dion Dion Johnson, um, who played at Michigan, and you know, he talked about how much his son really likes Coach Combs and. Uh, They've they've really clicked uh, those two, and, and and that's a guy that Will thinks if he plays for, he's going to maximize all his all his ability and potential 
um, you know, just seeing the others that have come through Ohio State before him at the position and the, and the success that they've had. I mean, he's incredibly intrigued by Ohio State. This new hire for Michigan, though, oh, the, let me walk it back for a second, Daniel. The, oh, Michigan led in the fall. Uh, even when he took that uh, recruit visit for the Wisconsin game, Michigan got pounded by Wisconsin. The wheels kind of fell off after that. Um, and, and, and even though Michigan led at that time for Wisconsin, I think quickly relinquished their lead. And, and I think that Ohio State uh, moved in the pole position. Uh, but I, I still think that there's an incredible amount of intrigue with Michigan. And uh, although maybe he was close to committing to Ohio state. It's, it's a deal where let's see who Michigan hires. Let's see, let's give them a chance to, you know, make a maneuver back into this, this thing. And and they went out and hired Maurice Linguist, who has a great reputation, not only as a coach, but as a recruiter. So I think they're going to give him a fair shake and, and, you know, we'll see if Michigan can make a move on Ohio state. We know where Ohio state stands. They're extremely high on the list up to Michigan to make a move on their rival. Maurice Linguist comes from the Dallas Cowboys. The entire defensive staff was fired, and this is his new job. I just thought I'd throw that in there. You did a great article about National Signing Day coming up, where the top guys are leaning. Ray John Davis is in there. Our guy JT Tuomola is also in there. Your crystal ball still rolling towards Ohio State. Talk a little bit, though, about National Signing Day and kind of what you expect out of the event this year, given the change in the way everything is run now in this current climate. Well, for National Signing Day, I think it's going to be more a celebration of everybody's recruiting classes as as they're going to be pretty much finalized. And I think you'll see head coaches out uh, across the land trumpeting their classes and and what they signed and how excited they are about it. And and it's always a fun day in that regard to get perspective from head coaches on on, on what they're bringing in. And, and, And then sometimes their thoughts on guys that have enrolled early and been with them through some some winter workouts and and, and so we'll certainly have that coverage on on 24 7 sports because we're going to do we're going to do a show uh again from from nashville uh but there are you know there are a handful of coveted recruits still out there that haven't made a college decision uh certainly a couple that ohio state has a keen eye on and and ray john davis who we've, we've already talked about and then jt the jt may not sign in february uh um talking to our lead expert on that, Brandon Huffman, uh, um, who, who's been indicating that. I talked to a source this week that said that he's still adamant about taking visits. So JT may be the one recruit in the 2021 class to outlast this COVID pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic. And hopefully the dead period is lifted in, in April and, and, and kids can get back out, out, out and, and visit schools and, and, and campuses. And if so, I mean, JT, he's a guy that, he doesn't need to sign anywhere. He's got a spot, man. You can just show up, brother. We we got room for you, man, whenever you want to come. You just be here for this is when class starts. You, you come by you come by this first day of class and, and uh we got we got you. Um and, and, and he knows that and so with that, he doesn't need to sign in February. If he wants to take some visits in, in April, um after it's over and then get to Ohio State for the first time, get back to Alabama, maybe go see Washington, Oregon and, and USC that round out this top five. Great. He could certainly also say, Hey, I'm tired of the process and managing these relationships with coaches and, and, and sign in February, put an end to it. But all indication is that he wants to take visits and be comfortable waiting it out until you know the the NCAA dead period is lifted. We will continue to hold out hope for JT Tuomola. We appreciate Steve stopping by. You've heard us wax poetic about just how important it was to get Chris Olave back. What is the national perspective on that from 24-7 Sports? We'll be right back with that. I want to start with, with Ohio State. Would you agree that of all the teams who won, they're the top winner just because Chris Olave is coming back? Yeah, it's it's hard to it's hard to kind of put a number on how important Chris Olave is for Ohio State, but kind of like last year when we saw Alabama bring back Jalen Waddle, who who had to come back, but also get Devontae Smith back, somewhat surprisingly. Ohio State's a huge winner here because now Ohio State, just like it did this year, can say it has two first round receivers on the outside and Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave coming back to help whoever the next quarterback is, kind of like we saw last year 
with those two Alabama receivers, helping Mac Jones kind of adjust to that role. So that'll be great for likely C.J. Stroud. But to have those two kind of receivers with Chris Olave leading the way alongside what is probably, I think you would agree, the deepest wide receiver room in the country, Ohio State's going to be stacked in a position we talk about over and over again about how critical it is. And for Chris Olave to lead that group heading into 2021, Ohio State's stock jumped one or two notches alone because he is an absolute difference maker on the outside. And like a little less known, but Jeremy Rucker, who made a who made a pretty big contribution in the semifinal and is back at tight end, who was a former elite recruit himself, is going to be a draft pick. To have him back at that position along with Tyreek Smith at defensive end, Ohio State's a big winner, even though they lost guys like Justin Fields. Like That factory is going to keep producing, but to bring back a couple of key contributors off this year's team is really going to launch them forward into next year. Alave's on, you mentioned it, the, the Devontae Smith you know, training program. And I think uh, a loaded 2021 NFL draft at receiver and a weaker 2022 draft brings him back. I think I was thinking about this, the fact that he was a three-star recruit out of high school. I don't want to put too much stock into this, but he was. And I, I wonder if going into college, his ex- ex- his expectations just being a three-star recruit are just different than the four and five stars who we know that they plan on just, they go, well, I'll be here for the next three years of, of my life. And a, a guy coming in with with really no 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 hype in Chris Olave, especially with this year being a lost year for so many guys, it makes sense to me why he would want to come back. So I'm I'm excited to watch him. I, I think CJ Stroud's going to put up huge numbers. I saw his Heisman odds were were skyrocketing, and and I think I think this Ohio State team's going to be dangerous. And you mentioned Garrett Wilson. If Garrett Wilson doesn't decide to come back for a fourth year, and if 2021 is his last, I think it's it's kind of crazy that he will go throughout his college tenure never being the top first option for his quarterback. He'll always sort of be second banana, despite well, the that, fact that he's he's just immensely talented. Yeah, I mean, it worked out pretty well for Jalen Waddle this year. Like Jalen Waddle, like when you think about, it, I don't mean to turn this into an Alabama thing. Jalen Waddle was only like a top option for Alabama for about six games of his career. So, like, on these teams like Ohio State and Alabama, that sometimes happens. And I agree with what you said about Garrett Wilson. But Chris Olave is kind of the top dog there. And I don't, I don't want to lean too heavily on the Devontae Smith comparison because they're not the same player. But, like, they're very similar both in stature and kind of build. Their games are kind of similar. Devontae's a little faster. I think Chris Olave tested pretty poorly in high school, which is one of the reasons why we had him rated so low. He ran in the four sevens, which I think undersells his speed considerably. But, like, they have a similar profile, similar build, similar fame, similar games in a lot of ways. They're great off the ball, great in releases. And I think next season could be a year with a full schedule ahead of them. Chris Olave can make the sort of jump into the first round we saw Devontae Smith make this year. 